Hey everybody, happy Monday. I am Stacy, and I'm just gonna give it a minute here to uh, make sure that I'm live and been having some issues. So, oh, perfect, here we go. All right, so just say hey as you're jumping on where you're watching from. Um, again, I'm Stacy with New Creations by Stacy, and I am an elite retailer in Alabama. I have one location at the Rustic Willow in Ardmore, and then I also am still here in Madison as well. Um, so just tonight, we're going to be working on this. Um, this is going to be another display piece. I know I've done a few of those. Um, but we're going to be working on this old um, antique wash stand and kind of doing some cool stuff, uh, painting over some decoupage paper, blending, and if we have time, some of the silk screen stencils. So tonight, we do have Dixie Bell on with us, so they can help answer any questions. Hey, Ginger. Um, hey, Ashley. Oh, hey, Wanda from Alabama. So um, Dixie Bell's here though, they can help answer any questions. I do have a full product list in the description. So you can see all the different paint colors that we're gonna use. Um, and I'll just go ahead and start talking about this. I'm sure I've forgotten something. In the description, there's a link too. So you can find your local retailer. And if you click the affiliate link on the top left-hand side, it'll say, find your local retailer. Click that, you'll be able to put in your zip code and find whoever's near you. Um, and also see what they carry as well. Hey, Nancy. Oh, wow, hey, Kim from New Zealand. All right, so um, tonight, oh, and also you can purchase any of these products through the affiliate link. But tonight, this is kind of where we're working up to. So you can see um, some of the silk screen stencils. And my design here isn't done, but this is just how far I've gotten. So we're gonna try to do the silk screen stencils. Um, over here, I actually have our decoupage paper, which is the, the blue roses here. Kind of made my own design, um, and I'll talk to you guys about that. And then I'm actually painting them over in pink, because that's what color I wanted. Um, so it's four different colors, but it's super easy. It's like a paint by number. Um, <clears throat> and we're gonna start on the front here. I've got some different things going on. This isn't painted because I'm actually gonna do this in white. It's gonna have a little um, cross pattern on it. Uh, and actually the inspiration from this, um, I was stocking my paint the other day and the Vintage Moo had the cutest plates from the Pioneer Woman. And um, I was kind of creatively having some problems finding inspiration. <laughs> And those plates did it for me. So that's how this all got started. Hey, Mike, finally. I, <laughs> I usually, Mike watches every week, but I never see him on here, so I don't get to say hello. Hey, Nancy from Buffalo. All right, you guys. So um, we're going to start off by doing some blending. And this is going to be done with In the Navy, which is this nice deep blue color. And then we're also going to be using Yankee Blue, which is a little bit lighter. Um, these colors are very similar, so you can see it a little bit more up here. That's because this only has one coat on it. Um, but, you know, the colors are so similar. The blend is very subtle, um, just, like the trans or just like the silk screen stencil that was on here. Um, oh, hey, Dixie Well, I see her here now. All right. And so for this blend, we've got our Mr. Bottle that we're going to be using, as well as um, I'm going to be using a round large brush for the Yankee Blue, which is the lighter blue color. And then I'm going to be using the Oval Small um, for the In the Navy. And also I have my blending brush. Um, I'm going to be using some paint. I've been painting today already, but I'll be using this for my blending brush to keep it wiped off with. And we will go ahead and get started because I kind of want to get through a lot of different things just to catch you up to where I'm at. Um, let's see. Like I said, if I miss any questions or anything like that, I will definitely come back at the end and um, 
answer anything that I've missed in the meantime. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead, well actually I'm going to get my paints out. And I no longer paint out of my canisters. I did that for a long time. I used to thin out the paint with water. Um, but I'm finding that I have a better finish and less overall clumps when I get to the bottom. If I do go ahead and um, just spoon a little bit out and put it into a paper plate. And looking for my spoons now. I see them. And I used to paint out of this uh, in the Navy. And that's how I ended up with this big clump of dried paint. So that's a good reason why you generally do not want to paint out of your canisters. Because um, the lids just don't close properly so you can get that, that dried up um, portion on the top. So I'm just grabbing my spoon here. And it doesn't take a lot of paint. We're gonna do these two shelves, which won't take us long at all. But you can see how little paint it takes. It's probably not gonna take more than that. Um, I'm gonna do two spoonfuls because we might do a little bit down the legs um, if I'm going moving pretty fast. And I'm gonna be mixing up these two colors anyway, so I'm just using the same spoon. And I'm gonna take a spoonful of the Yankee Blue. So you can see how pretty those are and how nicely they'll blend together. When you have closer colors like this too on the color wheel, um, on the color wheel, they're easier to blend. So if you're new to blending, that's a great way to start. Um, so Ashley asked, how do you keep your brushes so flat and smooth after cleaning them? So I use scrubby soap to clean my brushes, um, which is phenomenal. Uh, cause I, I don't take care of the best care of my brushes. They are definitely well loved. Um, but once I do the, the scrubby soap and you know, when I do it, I scrub it. Um, and then I put my brushes back into shape. I just go like this, um, to keep my brushes in shape. So you always want to reshape them when you're done. It's best if you can dry them hanging upside down. So they'll keep that as well. Otherwise, um, you can lay them down, but you never want to store them like this because that's just going to make everything run back into um, this section right here. So they just won't last as long. Um, let's see. All right, so we're going to start off. Just want to make sure you guys have a pretty good view here. And I'm going to bring you closer in um, when we get to the back side. We're just going to start off on this top shelf here. So this was a wash stand. Just to talk about this piece a little bit while I'm doing it. Um, you can just see I'm getting a little bit of in the navy. And I'm gonna go ahead and just run this. I'm gonna take this off. These are gonna be white. Uh, so I'm kind of trying to keep that line as best I can. Um, but this was a wash stand. So this piece up here is actually a piece of plywood. Um, that was added to make it a shelf because, you know, we didn't need that hole in the middle anymore. And then I used some of the Would You Bend and attached up here uh, because really it looked like it had a double shelf then. So I attached that Would You Bend in it to cover that up. Um, so this was just a quick little fix. And I'm bringing this navy in quite a bit because I'm actually gonna overlap my colors. I want this um, to have a nice, a nice blend, a nice transition. I don't want it to be a hard transition. So I'm actually, for this part, I'm actually gonna use the same brush. I don't think I'm gonna switch brushes. So I'm gonna load this up really nicely with the Yankee Blue. And you'll see I'm just kind of Keeping the direction here, and I'm putting this Yankee Blue over the in the navy because I want a nice smooth transition. Nice good highlight using the same brush. I'm blending it together. This is not normally the way you see me necessarily blend, but like I said, I want a very smooth transition. 
So I'm mixing it up with all the same brush. And then I'm gonna come in with my blending brush. Now my blending brush is a dry brush. Um, I find that it's easier to blend with a dry brush. I'm not really sure why, because you think, I mean, logically, if you think about it, you would really think it would be a little bit better with a wet brush, but just seems to pull the colors together and not make the paint stick to the brush, which with your blending brush, you don't want it to stick. So I've got a really nice even transition going. I don't want to overwork this too much. And um, if you overwork it, you'll feel your paint start to pull back a little bit. I also always try to work from the top down because when you're misting, some of those misting speckles, if they fall on a portion that you've just worked, you can get um, get little speckles in your paint so you can see where the finish isn't that nice. That's great for an old world finish, but um, I'm gonna age this out just because of the condition of the wood, uh, but I don't want it to look, um, I don't want an old world finish. I still want it to be smooth. So now we're just gonna blend this front panel. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use the same brush, just put a little bit of In the Navy on it. And I made sure that I had good coverage um, on my Would You Bend up here on my first coat, so I don't have to be as concerned with that. Um, making sure that I get into all those details because I did get that coverage initially. So I'm just bringing this in the navy. So once I get to the center up here, I want this part to have a nice highlight. So using the same brush, I'm just gonna add a little bit of the Yankee Blue again. And I'm just gonna streak that across. So I did get quite a bit of Yankee Blue on my brush. And since I'm using the same brush, I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit. Now this is my brush that I started with wet. It's not my blending brush, but I am using it to bring these colors together to give it a smooth blend. So this isn't normally, like I said, how I would do it, but for this piece and how I want it painted, definitely. So now I'm coming back with my true blending brush, the third brush. And I'm just, where I see, if I see a little streak or where my paint hasn't come together well, I'm just going over that section. Um, perfect, so I really like that highlight. It's blending in together. So now I do wanna add a little bit extra on the raised portion of my Would You Bend. So I'm just gonna add a little bit Oh, thanks, Donna. Thanks, Tammy. Oh, you have to see the plates, though. They are gorgeous. Um, that inspired this. I, I have to get a set. She only had the salad plates, but um, love them. So what I'm doing right now, I'm putting a little bit of paint on my brush, and then I'm kind of wiping it back some. So the tip just has that lighter color and very lightly, almost like you would do a dry brush, but this is wet. I'm just very lightly going over that raised portion and that's all the way around. I wanna give this dimension. Um, probably come back with a, with a black wax at the end of this um, to really get in those recesses and help age it out some more. Maybe a little bit of Dixie Dirt and Charcoal. I don't know. Maybe a little Grunge Gray. That might be pretty too. So let's go ahead and we'll get this done. Now the reason, so this is, these aren't really drawers down here. You can see this hardware. The original hardware, this is so old. The original hardware um, actually has pins on it. So you stick it through the hole and then you bend it back, almost like those little prong notebooks. So I went ahead, I just taped these off because I would have had to take this all apart to get back there and get those pins out. Um, and I'm doing the hardware in gold anyway. So I just taped this off and I'm gonna end up painting this hardware white with silk. 
Um, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. These are going to have some designs of their own, but that's why I haven't painted that area. So let's just go ahead and I'm misting that down nice and good with the water. And then we're going to do the same thing we did on the top shelf and then we'll move around to some of the detail work here. Um, so for the wood you bend, I use the tight bond wood glue. Uh, oh, I've already put it away. Sorry. I was hoping I <laughs> maybe still had it out, but it's carried by Dixie Bell. Um, I carry it in the store. Um, I'm not sure. I think most retailers do. Most, most of the Dixie Bell retailers that I've seen, if they're, especially if they're premier or elite, um, they do have it in the store. And I'm just making sure I get nice, good coverage here with the, in the navy. And I didn't get any water on this spot. So just spray that down again. All right, perfect. So then I'm going to come back in with the Yankee Blue. Just like before, go to the center. And while I'm doing this, um, to talk about how I started this piece, sometimes I forget when I'm trying to get so many steps in um, on the live. But I actually started it by cleaning it with white lightning. Um, since I'm going with a dark color and it wasn't a slick surface, uh, I didn't have to do any, any primer, anything like that. Um, and I'll talk about my white sections in a minute because I did not do any primer. Actually, I'm not ready to go straight to my blending brush. I wanna, this seems to be drying pretty quickly down here. Um, I'm using the brush that I applied the paint with to kind of blend it together a little bit more. Before I switch over to my blending brush, I want that nice smooth transition. And that's why I'm doing it this way. All right, and then I'm coming back in with my dry blending brush again. And I'm just gonna go various directions to pull those colors together. keeping it nice and wet and um, how I'm determining when I'm actually spraying it with water again or misting it is by how my brush feels I'm doing a very light stroke over here and if my brush is starting to drag that's when I'm remisting it with water I want my paint or my brush to just glide across here mix that paint up really well so this looks like it's blended together pretty well. Um, so right now, so this is already starting to dry and I'm not sure if that's what you can see on the camera or not. Oh, thanks, Gracie. Thanks, Dixie Bell. Um, from decor transfers. Oh yes, Donna said she's working um, with the native transfer on a trunk. Yeah, I love the transfers. I've been doing so much with them. I tried to use the floral romance for this, but the flowers weren't just exactly what I wanted. So that's how I ended up deciding to use the decoupage paper and then paint over it. So I'm all done here um, with the blending. I'll go ahead and do this. I'm doing this all in the navy for this outline as well as the legs. Uh, so we won't do any more blending. We'll go ahead and stop there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my brushes put away. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just miss my brushes. And since I can't wash them right away, or if I was gonna be using them again today, um, then I just put them in a plastic bag here. They keep well too if you put them in the refrigerator. You can usually leave them there for a couple days. Don't be like me and forget. Um, I found one in the refrigerator this morning. I usually notice when I'm missing paint brushes and I found one in the refrigerator this morning. I don't know how long it had been there, but the paint washed right out of it. So it was, it was great. 
All right, so I've got um, these in here. They'll keep just fine since I can't wash them right away. And then we are going to, we're gonna talk about the white section really quick. Um, I'm gonna try to show you guys something. So this piece is definitely a bleeder. A lot of times, well, I know pretty much which woods are bleeders just because I've worked on so much furniture. Um, so like walnut, mahogany, cherry, particularly um, the knots in pine, um, oak, those are bleeders. The tannins go through the paint. And that's where you see a lot of people think like their paint is yellowing or whatever, which that can happen depending on what you're doing, but, um, or depending on other things that you may have done. But um, a lot of times that's tannins uh, that are seeping through. So this was all the chalk mineral paint line, but I'm also actually using the silk line on this as well. So the silk has a built-in um, stain blocker, so it'll block the tannins. Um, it's equivalent to about one coat of boss um, in, in this coat here. And it also has a protectant built-in as well. And then of course, paint color. Um, so I've been playing around because you know, whites are always hard to paint with. Um, nobody really likes to paint in white because a lot of times it takes so many coats to get good coverage or you have to, you know, worry about more about bleed through and using white. So I absolutely am loving this boss, loving this, or not boss, sorry, silk. Um, so the idea is that if you would normally use two coats of silk or two coats of boss, um, and, and this is two coats of silk, that you would use one coat of boss and then your two coats of silk to cover. And that's great. I've tried it, experimented, no bleed through. I've had really good luck. But it stands to reason, I started trying to reason it out. That's where I get in trouble usually. But um, I was thinking, you know, if I put three coats on, can I, can I really block the bleed through and not have to worry about the boss at all? Um, and this was a heavy bleeder. I tried it on a piece last week that I did in Oyster. And two coats plus a, um, a third spot coat, um, no more bleed through. So the first coat, I saw some bleed through. Second coat, saw a little bit of bleed through. Put a third coat of silk on it and no more bleed through. Um, that was a spot coat. I just kind of did it in certain areas. So I decided to try it with white cap because white cap is white. Um, and I did three coats of this in white cap, and I have no bleed through. The first coat, I started getting really worried, thought I was going to go back and put a coat of boss on it, but I decided to just keep on going and pray, <laughs> and it worked. So we are actually, I'm going to see if I can, I'm not going to really use the silk here because I've got a, several other things I need to do before I really get going, but I'm going to paint some silk on here. And this was a true, true bleeder. So I'm hoping that once this dries, I can spin you around at the end. And you wanna do long coats with the silk. I'm just trying to get in here without uh, getting paint on anything, anywhere that I don't want it. I almost fell off my stool. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna spin you back around. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to see how that bleed through looks. But that's all I wanted to do there. Um, so you can really see how amazing that silk paint is and blocking, especially if you like painting in white, which I normally don't, but all right. So I'm going to go ahead and spin this around because we are going to start working on the details. Um, and I will bring you guys in a little bit closer. <clears throat> So again, I am using the blue flower decoupage paper. I'm just gonna kind of show you what this looks like. So this is the, I mean, it's really blue and white. Um, so this is it, but these are the exact roses, the right sizes that I wanted, and I didn't really wanna draw them out. So I decided to decoupage them on. I used satin, um, super easy. Just cut them out, put 
put them on with the satin, let it dry. And now I am using it, like I said, like a paint by number to paint the roses and get them how I want them. So to do this, I'm actually using, oops, I'm using muscadine wine. So you can see it's just a, a really nice, rich, kind of burgundy color. Um, and this is really a small version of blending. Um, when you do this little detail work, and if you can get this, you have blending on a large scale. So we're not using a whole lot of paint. I'm just tapping out a little spoonful on my plate here. Oh, hey, Karina from Australia. Good morning. <laughs> I'll probably be answering questions and going to bed after this here. All right, and then we're gonna use Plum Crazy. And I'm using the same spoon. I'm really not worried about, this is such a small amount that'll seep in here. Not worried about cross-contaminating my colors. And I'm doing a lot of blending on my plate as well um, for these flowers to get all of the, the colors in um, and make them look natural. Hopefully they look natural. <laughs> All right, so we've got peony, which is kind of like a hot pink. Love this color. Um, love the plum crazy too. I just love all the Dixie Belle colors. I'm so happy they have such a wide range of colors. Um, you can really mix anything that you want uh, because you've just got everything to work from. Um, Sorry, I think I've got something in my eye here, so let's see. And then we're using Tea Rose as the last color. This is my highlight color. And you can see what that looks like. And you can see what happens when you paint out of your jars. Um, so again, a little pad of that. And for this, to paint these, I'm just using some Artist brushes, I'll show you what I've got here. Um, for the most part, they're just the little pointed brushes. And then I've got a flat, a small flat one if I wanna do some, bring these colors together, anything like that. Oh, hey, from Mexico. Um, hey, Angela. All right, so I do use my Mr. Bottle here because I, I'm not gonna mist this piece, but I wanna keep my brushes wet so that my paint blends. Um, so I'm going to start off by wetting those down and I keep them wet. Also want to have, just like you do with the blending, I want to have a paper towel here so I can wipe my brushes off, get that, that paint on them and bring everything together. So we'll go ahead and start on this, this one up here. I'm doing each petal separately. Just put a little bit of the muscadine wine on here. And like I said, you just do it like at paint by number. So where it's really dark with this blue, I am just coming in with my muscadine wine and painting all those dark. So then I'm gonna use the same brush you can see on my plate. Actually going to take a little plum crazy, stick a little bit of that peony in there so I can get several shades going. And then I'm just gonna come over here and where I have, see so this, this decoupage paper is sketch, so this is super easy. Um, all I'm doing is where that, that medium blue is. That's where I'm using the, um, my medium colors here, the peony and the plum crazy. And where you get into these whites, that's where, you know what, I don't like that brush. It's just really thick. So I'm gonna pick up a different one. And I'm just gonna come in with this tea rose a little bit. And again, just going over those sketched areas. And then I'm gonna take my flat here. And I just wanna make sure you guys can see, yep. 
take my flat here. And you know, almost like you do with the Besting Wax Brush. I don't know if you've seen anybody blend with that, how they kind of swirl it together. You can do that on here to bring these colors together. You can just add a little bit more paint to get that really going. Um, there you go, that's it for that petal. And we're just going around and doing all the petals. I did kind of have to draw out with a watercolor pencil where I'm gonna do my leaves because they were just too small to cut off that decoupage paper. Oh, thank you, Dixie Bell. Hey, Stephanie from Texas. All right, so I've got some time. We're gonna keep doing, we're gonna do a few more petals on here so you can just, I mean, really, it's kind of time consuming. It definitely is, but it's well worth it. Um, it is good too if you're painting like this. I mean, I don't always follow this, but if you do the petals that are, um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and spray my paint. It's just a little bit dry here. But if you do the petals that are like in the background, the other, the underneath petals, uh, it'll be easier for you to come up to the petals in the foreground. There's very little paint. And I'm dotting it on too. It's not even like I'm being really careful. I'm not really trying to follow those lines. When I am making my brush strokes here to kind of bring this together, I am kind of trying to stay in the direction that the petal would actually go with my brush strokes. Um, because you can see my brush strokes and that's what I want. So wipe my brush a little bit on my plate. I'm gonna go back over here. You see I'm kind of just pulling that out so I can wipe some of the paint off. This is my muscadine wine I'm coming in with. And again, I'm just putting this where I have the darkest blue. And we're going with the plum crazy and kind of the peony a little bit here. Mix it up some. You know, you want lots of different shades when you're doing something like this. Um, you don't have to be exact, but all those different shades blended together. It's what gives it really a lot of depth. Just gonna wipe it off on the paper towel because I've got a little bit much paint going on. Um, all these different shades give it some depth. I'm also leaving some of that blue showing through. I mean, I'm not being super exact because that also gives it some depth. And I'm just kind of dotting on. Bring this clean brush over here kind of pull these colors together a little bit. You can do a little scrubby, which is what I'm kind of doing. There's a bunch of different techniques you can use. You can also build it up so you have some texture. And that always looks really pretty. Just keep on going. And that's, that's really all there is to this. Um, and I mean, the possibilities are endless. Once I thought about this painting, using your decoupage paper like a paint by number. Oh, hey, Mert, my aunt's on. That's Mert from Ohio. <laughs> All right, so we're just coming back in here. And again, using that muscadine wine on that dark blue. No leaf or that petal actually comes down a bit. So, I mean, I'm gonna do two petals here in one. Little peony, give it some bright little pop here. And we'll come in and get that, that right where the light would be hitting it on the end of the petal, you know, how you kind of have the dew just bring that in and give those petals some dimension. I'm gonna come in with some plum crazy over here. Again, I'm just following these blue sketched lines on this decoupage paper and using the same brush for the most part, just re-dipping it. And you can see no paint whatsoever there. So we're just getting this outside. 
And before I start doing all of this detail work like this, I do protect this with a satin clear coat. And the reason that I do that, if I do not like what I just did on here, I can take a baby wipe and I can wipe this off because I have this satin clear coat in between um, and that's protecting my original layer of paint, my original paint job. So when I do my detail work, I don't always like what I do. Sometimes I want the option to just wipe it off without having to repaint the whole thing. So that's one reason why that's so important. Um, hey, Susan from PA. All right. So what we can do, we've only got a few more minutes. Um, and you can kind of see how easy that is. You can see how one of these turns out. Um, I would say, it, you know, it doesn't take too long. Um, once I get to the floor, or once I get to the leaves here, I'm going to use the same technique, even though I've drawn them on. I can still look at, at the thing and see where the shading is. Um, I'll probably use like an evergreen, a kudzu, collard greens, and probably like a dried sage for the, the highlight, like the highlight I'm doing with the tea rose. Um, so that's how I'll, I'll do that. And like I said, I use a watercolor pencil because when you paint over the watercolor pencil, um, it dissolves. It goes away because it gets that moisture in it. Oh, thanks, Mert. All right. So let's go ahead and I want to do this silk screen stencil with you guys right quick. I think I have time. Yep. I've got a few minutes. So I think what I'm going to do... Um, I'm actually going to use some mousse. I'm going to use some golden gem mousse. I want to give a quick disclaimer. I've not used the mousse with the silk screen stencils before. Um, so we're going to kind of see how that works out together. But again, I'm not really worried. Now this paint here, it doesn't have a protectant over it. This silk screen stencil, um, which is from the floral, same one that I've got out here that we're getting ready to use. Um, but this is this piece right here. Um, and this is in a mix. I wanted to keep this subtle. So it's in a mix of in the navy and Yankee blue. Not measured. I just kind of put an equal amount in and stirred it up. Um, but I think this whole section over here I'm going to have in layers. Um, and I'm going to put some gold on it because I'm going to have some gold on the hardware. And uh, when I get these checks and everything in here, we'll see that. So... We're gonna do a quick, well, if I can get this off, we're gonna do it. Well. Maybe. There we go. So normally I cut that out because I, I like to have small pieces, but since we're just doing this quickly. Um, oh, thanks, Cheryl. We are, I think I'm gonna take this Maybe do a the gold flower kind of. It's gonna go right over, or what do you guys think? The top corner, the opposite corner, or you think down here? Or I could even go over here with it, but uh, I feel like that's a little that's a little too piled up. Let's try it over here. Any votes? Any thoughts? Anybody <laughs> up here? Over here? Well, we're going to go over here. We can always wipe it off if we don't like it. All right. I just kind of want to see what it looks like, you know, and this is kind of how my designs usually go. Like I just get some ideas and I start going with them. If I don't like them because they don't always work out, then I just uh, or go with the rest of that idea, wipe it off and go from there. So I'm just gonna rub that down pretty well. I mean, you don't have to have it too hard or anything. Um, these are adhesive, the silk screen stencils are. They're good up to about 10 uses. Um, how you take care of them kind of determines how well they last. So this one I actually haven't used, this particular one, but we are going to um, go ahead and see how that looks with the mousse. The mousse is a little bit, oh, Wanda said top left corner, any other votes? Let's do the top left corner. I'm all for it because like I said, if we don't like it, we can move it. All right, so let's put it up here. 
So when you are done with these and you want to wash them too, um, you just put them under the water, uh, get the paint off, and then put them, I put mine face down on a paper towel with the non-sticky side down. You want the sticky side up because uh, if you do put that flat on the paper towel, it will stick. You'll get all kinds of fuzzies and everything that don't come off very well. All right, so I got a few minutes. I know there's somebody coming on after me. I've used a lot of my Golden Gem Mousse, so I don't have a whole lot left. I really need to thin it out. Um, so I'm going to spray some water in here. want it pretty, pretty thin. Hopefully I didn't add too much. I'm just going to keep stirring it. And so the Golden Gem, sometimes it can look a little green. Um, it's also heavily pigmented. Uh, more so than the other color, so it is much thicker. Sometimes it can look a little chunky. Your golden gem is fine. It is gorgeous. Still goes on like butter. I mean, so silky and smooth. So you can see how nasty mine originally looked. You just saw me spray it with that Mr. Bottle. And now I have a nice smooth, hopefully you can see, I have a nice smooth um, texture going on again. So this comes with a little squeegee, a little white squeegee, all of these do. You want to save your backing because once, you're, once you wash it and it dries, you put it right back on here. Here's your little squeegee. Um, sometimes I use these, sometimes I don't. It kind of just depends. And then I'm going to, I'm actually going to use this brush to apply it with. It's the same brush I used to apply the other ones. Um, so with this, I will normally dab kind of over and then, actually I do these silk screen stencils different every time. I'm going more with this method because I haven't used the mousse before. So until I'm kind of comfortable with it and have done a little experimenting, I'm gonna try to keep it to dragging over with my little squeegee. Now I want to make sure I miss that other flower over here. And I don't necessarily need these perfect. Um, because again, this is an antique piece, very old. And you can tell. Um, on camera, you know, you don't always see all the, the dents and the dings and everything. But I um, just want to make sure I get it. I think I have some spots that aren't covered well on here. Yeah, I do. Just making sure that I've got this all over the silk screen. So there we go. I've got it all covered. And now in the last few minutes, we're going to see what this looks like. Hopefully it's good. I'm a little nervous since I decided to experiment live, but... <laughs> So we're just gonna peel this back. Oh yeah, I do, I love that. So let me bring you guys in so you can see it. Of course it's still drying um, and I definitely want to, I wanted to do that last cause I wanna go wash my stencil. Um, but you can see how that turned out kind of over here. So I'm loving this. I'm probably gonna do some other things here. I just haven't got that far in my design process, but I mean, the possibilities are endless with the Dixie Bell products, truly. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed tonight and um, hopefully something of value in this. If you know anybody who could use this, definitely um, please share it. Uh, like my Facebook page and follow me on Facebook. And I will post the final pictures. Um, I do have pictures. I've been really busy the last couple weeks. I do have pictures from the last lives um, that I've done on here. I just haven't had time to post them yet. So I will be doing that soon. Um, I don't actually have any skulls on here. This is the floral transfer by Dixie, or the silk screen transfer by Dixie Bell. This is actually what it is. I've got somewhere, I kind of did a little bit. Well, this one in here, I didn't want full coverage. I wanted it to look a little bit more distressed. So I didn't cover everything. So that may be probably why it looks like a skull, but that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so you guys take care. I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks, Mert. Um, and have a wonderful night. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.